But let's um, cover some other areas and then we'll take you to Parliament as and when we ought to because there's a, there appears to be a simmering union that the NDC's presidential hopeful, John Dramani Mahama, is forging with many of the country's credible national civil society organizations to push through a constitutional reform. And we know that it was evident in the high turnout from the civil society block at as yesterday's public lecture on a political party campaign financing, uh, which happened yesterday. Well, if you don't believe me, last night we saw a number of these civil society group, bipartisan legislation. They were all there to support um, former President John Dramani Mahama in this particular drive because there had been some collaboration earlier. We hear the substantive matters that the former president has been raising, but then first, Let's hear him talk about that collaboration between himself and civil society on these matters. In an interaction I had with civil society organizations and other public advocacy groups in November last year, we had a broad-based discussion on issues of governance reform and how we can strengthen our democracy and restore faith in our constitutional governance and the rule of law. A theme that kept recurring during this meeting was the issue of campaign financing and its link to corruption and influence peddling in government. This topic, I believe, is very close and dear to the hearts and minds of many Ghanaians. I do not have all the answers, but it is my expectation that as a key stakeholder in Ghana's political space, my comment on this issue will elevate the public discourse on the matter and hopefully lead to necessary reforms in this area. Well, a study by the Center for Democratic Development mentions that uh, a political party and then presidential candidates will need up to a hundred million uh, dollars to prosecute a very vibrant campaign. So that's the issue that former president is hoping uh, to get a solution to. Listen to him proffer some proposals. In recent times, some financing of political campaigns has come from illegal activities, and I think Dr. Asante referred to that, such as illegal mining, oil bankering, fraudulent businesses, procurement deals in the award of contracts, and among others. The CDD study even reported that there could be a strong association between financing of political parties and organized crime in Ghana. This is indeed worrying. Worrying because it has the potential of mortgaging our governance system to criminals. If that happens, our democracy will be gradually turned into a plutocracy, a plutocracy, a country ruled indirectly by only a few wealthy individuals. On government support for funding political parties, some have argued that the only funding that may be advanced to parties and cannot be concealed in secrecy is public funding of these parties. This refers to government giving financial resources or indirect assistance to political parties. As mentioned, in the absence of such support and given the huge cost of political activities, wealthy party financiers take over as political godfathers who determine electoral outcomes and all that follows it. And as I stated earlier, because of our current economic crisis, additional state financing may not be a viable option at this time. Even if that became an option in the future, I recommend that we put in place an explicit public funding of political parties bill in a bipartisan and inclusive manner to regulate this phenomenon. I further recommend that should public funding of political parties be scaled up in the foreseeable future, then an independent and credible institution must be selected to administer the state resources advanced to political parties. In that regard, a sharing formula could be established to ensure fairness and specific disclosure requirements on beneficiary parties must be imposed. This must be complemented by auditing and publication of party accounts. 
Well, a number of the civil society groups were on the same page with former President John Dramani Mahama. We can hear from the executive director of IDEC, Dr. Akwiti. Of working together to transform economies and societies. So having looked at what the situation is and having read the concept uh, paper that we got, we thought that in the next 30 years, the challenge is could we rebuild our parties into development agents? And there is data that shows, and could you refer to the marginalization that the majority voters themselves complain of, women, youth. And they say this system is not working. In fact, all the arrangements made under the 1992 constitution to ensure that women, youth, people with disability, chiefs, and so on, would be represented in the local government system has failed. It hasn't worked. And we sincerely believe that if we do not look at the structures we created, the assumptions, and what has caused this failure, we may lose the next 30 years. And we tend to therefore have a different approach, which is that probably in the next 30 years, we want to see that our parties do not do just elections, but they really are building a nation and transforming our economy. Well, earlier, the former Auditor General, Daniel Yao Domelovo, says the unregulated campaign funding is breeding so much corruption in the public space. Let's face it, these amounts are huge figures. I don't know how much it is, but they are not philanthropies. They are investing and they have to recoup it. So when they get back to office or they get the opportunity one day, they have to recoup and recoup with interest, such that the subsequent elections or the next or upcoming elections, they may have enough money to fund it. But even if it is a one-off transaction, you may agree with me that the person may have to refund that money to wherever he or she got it from. Even if it is his personal money, he must have to recover it. How do you recover it? I don't think we expect that it is recovered from the salaries that are paid to them. I don't believe that any of them earn salary. In fact, be it president or minister, and salary, which is enough to pay back those amounts. Therefore, one has to get himself or herself involved in some procurement malpractices or financial engineering, re-engineering, so that he can get some funds and pay back. So I think it's a very important topic, which we should have discussed yesteryears, when our democracy started. But it's better late than uh, never. Well, let's stay a while longer in the camp of the opposition, NDC, and we know that today... Before...